Hey guys, um, today we're going to be talking about this machine we see in front of us, which uh, obviously is a Macintosh. You can tell from the Apple there. Now, off the bat, I mean, a couple of you might be thinking, well, that's not an ancient electronic. It's not even retro or old. And, I don't know. I always find that kind of odd because this machine is from the 2000, 2001, maybe 2002 era. Um, and if this was the year 2000 and YouTube was around and I was talking about something from 1985, I think it's safe to say that everyone would be, would be like, oh yeah, that's retro, that's old, that's old. But this, um, comparatively, is this the same time. It's the same amount of time between, you know, 2000, between 1985 and 2000, 15 years. Well, it's been 15 years since this was out on the market. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just because it seems like computers... That, that super fast progress we've seen in computers has sort of maybe slowed down. Um, so the, even 15 years old, this machine is in a lot of ways more relatable and comparable to a modern machine where as a computer from 2000 and a computer from 1985, it was like, you know, like a V8 road, you know, <laughs> car and a horse and buggy. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe that's part of it, um, but yeah, this, I mean, yeah, 2001, I kind of am considering that ancient in computer years. Um, also, uh, the stuff, all that stuff back there, uh, you might be thinking it's some kind of attempt to do the whole cliche, you know, when you're talking about games or something, you have like the shelves behind you full of crap, <laughs> game crap and stuff, and although I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to do that cliche, um, no, it's just because I'm in an apartment and I have stuff piled on stuff. And so when I get things out like this, I just throw that uh, stuff that was on top of it on the bed over there. Uh, so <laughs> that's why that's there. Believe me, I'd love to have space to have a big stupid shelf behind me full of computers and games and stuff. But uh, that's not the case uh, with this small living arrangement. Anyways, to the machine. Uh, this is a G4 Macintosh. Um, usually I start off my Macintosh reviews by saying that I don't really care for Macs and that they've grown on me. I like this machine. I, I do. I like it. Uh, maybe it's because it's very PC-like, um, but I like it. Um, where do I start? Okay, there's a lot of sort of models of the G4. Uh, there were the earlier ones <clears throat> that are sometimes called like the Sawtooth. And then there's one that came in the middle, and then I think they call those like the Quicksilver ones. Usually you could tell by the case design uh, what sort of sub-model it was. And then the last ones they usually call like the mirror drive doors uh, model uh, because of the case. I'll, I'll do, I have one actually, I'll, I'll do a video on that eventually. Um, this is a digital audio version. There's kind of like sub-models, sub I guess. Uh, this Use, this is an interesting one um, because this uses the case of the original series of G4 Max, um, which is this sort of, uh, it's kind of like gray and this blue, which I really kind of like this color scheme. Um, but the motherboard inside is uh, kind of the motherboard of the Quicksilver style uh, G4. So it's kind of interesting that way. Um, but yeah, I, I do like this case. It's kind of weird how there's handles, you got handles um, on the bottom and top. I don't know, it's kind of, it might be weird. But yeah, you've got these handles everywhere and it's heavy. It's a, it's kind of a heavy beast. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of like the handles. I just, I like this case. Uh, you know, it's got that kind of Mac design, but it's all mostly plastic, but it's not, cheap. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel brittle. It feels very solid and sturdy. Um, you've got your speaker here. Here's your power button. And when you press this button, it kind of like lights up white, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have a reset button and a programmer's button. The programmer's button is basically, your average user probably isn't really going to use that button. But the programmer's button is like you can use it for uh, updating firmware or debugging, bringing up like a console screen stuff. Most people really aren't going to bother with that. But there's two drive bays here. And typically what the setup was, you'd have a, a DVD drive or a CDR drive. And that's what's in here. That's can eject with that button. I can't manually open it though. Um, and then down here, sometimes it would either be blank. You could probably, I think you could put another 
disk drive in here, but usually they ha you had like a zip drive as an option, uh, like a 100 megabyte zip drive, and it came with the cool color matching thing, so um, that, that was the usual setup. So uh, let's look at the back really quick. So there's not too much to go into on this computer because it's not too bizarre or odd in design. Um, So here's the back, and uh, you know we have <clears throat> you have your audio port for headphones, and you have a modem, and then this is a this isn't like a standard jack. It's for like Apple high fidelity speakers. It won't fit a uh, standard. I'm trying to see if I have one laying around. So here's like a standard audio jack, but it doesn't fit. So you need some kind of special, I don't know, looking up it says like Apple high fidelity speakers or something. So it must be some sort of proprietary Apple Jack, uh, <laughs> Apple Jack, uh, for, um, you know, high fidelity speakers apparently. Um, gigabyte Ethernet right there, two Firewire, I believe Firewire 400 ports, and two USB 1.1 right there. Um, as for expansion, uh, these didn't have built-in video, but they did have, they did come with video cards. Uh, there's one here. You can see it has uh, DVI and v just standard VGA. It doesn't use the weird uh, kind of Apple style VGA. Uh, this is a Rage, I think it's a 16 megabyte, maybe 32 megabyte Rage uh, 128 Pro. Uh, around this time period, Apple really loved ATI and <laughs> they seem to have ATI cards that came with a lot of units and were built into a lot of units too. Um, this is just something I, I added. It's a uh, just extra firewire and USB port. So let's take a look inside and what I like about this is even as far as Macs go this opens very very easily. And, all it is, is this. So, just lift up, and it opens. Very simple, you don't really have to put much pressure on it. It's just really easy, really easy to get inside work on this thing. And that's it, close it up, open. Probably the easiest time I've ever had getting into a computer, any computer, um, even other Macs, which are known sometimes to, to, you know, well, the earlier ones, the compact Macs, they didn't want you getting into. Um, those are kind of asshole. But later on, it seems like uh, part of their thing was, you know, making it easy to get inside. And this machine's just incredibly easy to get into. So let's take a closer look here, see what's inside this thing. All right, so here we are looking at the internals. Um, you'll see on the motherboard there's not a whole ton of like chips and transistors and stuff. I believe a lot of this stuff, um, I know from later models and looking at them, on, I believe a lot of that stuff is soldered on the underside of the motherboard. So the up here looking at it, it looks kind of barren, um, but I believe there's a lot soldered onto the bottom. At least how that's how the the later, uh, the mirror drive door model is. Um, so yeah, I mean, standard Mac stuff, you have your, their version of like the CMOS battery here. Um, if your machine's acting weird at all, replace this. Uh, that's usually the problem. Here's the CPU. Uh, this is just, they came in models that had dual uh, CPU. This is a single, it's, I don't know why it has this weird plastic sheathing over it. Uh, this uh, model I have, it's a 733 megahertz uh, G4 power PC chip. I, I really like the CPU in this thing. Um, comparatively, it's very hard to get comparisons between power PC chips and what their Intel equivalent would be. Um, it's just, they're just different beasts, so it's hard to sort of quantify that. Um, but from my research and talking to people and stuff, I mean, generally a power PC. Uh, it's going to be faster at the same megahertz. So this is probably maybe roughly equal to a a very fast Pentium 3, maybe a 1 or a 1.4 gigahertz Pentium 3. This is roughly maybe equal to in processing power um, at 733 megahertz. So 
up. All right, so other things, we have RAM here. Uh, I have 1.5 gigs uh, of RAM in this thing. This takes PC133 SD RAM. Yep, so this is SD RAM, this is PC133. Uh, that's what this machine takes, and it can take up to 1.5 gigs. So I have three uh, 512 megabyte sticks, and that is the max that this machine will take. All right. I'm not gonna pull this card off, but this is the Rage card that I was talking about earlier. It's not anything really special, uh, just a Rage 128 Pro uh, for video. Uh, they came with these cards. I believe you could also get models that came with uh, special Macintosh uh, GeForce uh, 2 and 4s, but they, were, they used a special Macintosh BIOS, so you can't just take a PC video card and stick it in here. You'd have to flash the BIOS for it. And it's running on the built-in uh, AGP. I believe that's AGP times 8 uh, slot in this on this model's motherboard. Uh, earlier G4s, I believe, maybe had a times 2 AGP, and then the earliest G4 towers, I think, didn't even have AGP. They just used PCI. Um, there's power. This is the airport wireless card, so it does support wireless. Um, IDE controller, uh, IDE, well not the controller, but that's uh, you know your IDE connector, another one here. Uh, the built-in, I believe it's uh, ATA 66. Um, so I added a card here, and this is an ATA 100 for a little bit, little speed boost. Uh, I, I added this ATA 100 IDE controller card. And connects here, here's the hard drive, uh, this is just a 40 gig. I don't really use this machine much. I'm probably gonna get rid of it um, because I have a much faster, better machine. This was just, I've just kind of had this for a while. Um, so I haven't really done big upgrades to it. But yeah, this is just an 80, uh, 80 gig a hard drive. There's space here to add another and here. Um, I think you have to have these like slides though. So not much going on here. Here we have the bays. Um, looking at this, I think I was wrong. You can't add an optical drive down here, probably without modding the case, because this looks like it's for a smaller. This is just for the zip uh, drive, but here's the optical. This might be able to be pulled out. I'm not sure. Um, power supply. That's about it. It's, it's pretty simple in here. It's still a capable machine, but pretty simple. Um, so we're just going to, I'm going to power it up just go into the OS real quick and that will be probably it for this video all right so here I have another you know quick setup on the floor on the floor that definitely needs mopped uh, so let's see how this goes uh, power there and then power see how it lights up that nice white there we go it's not too loud Okay, no signal, but any second now. Oh, no signal. Hmm. Any, there we go. Yay. I think I have OS 10 something. I have the fastest OS that officially will run on this machine. So I don't, I'm not real familiar with, uh, Apple OS. I think it's like Lion or something. All right, here we are. And if you can notice, this green's all messed up because this monitor. It, I, I mentioned this in my last video. This monitor was meant. It's like a kitchen thing. It's supposed to have like recipes, and you you hang it in your kitchen, and it's it's it was this device um, that you could use for kitchen stuff. It was really meant to like. It was some kind of kitchen mate. Okay. Um, so it's not really meant to be a computer monitor or a TV, but those are kind of like things it can kind of do, but it doesn't do that so well. And it has like a ton of connections on the back and it's light. Um, so it's good for this kind of like testing and it's easy to move around and it connects to like pretty much anything. Um, it's got everything on the back from RF to HDMI. Um, but it just, it doesn't work that well. The picture's not so good. 
it's it's hard to adjust i know it's a resolution thing but it, even playing around with it it's just not very easy to mess with um after it's been on a while like it cuts out like it will just go black or it will start flickering different colors um so it kind of sucks but for quick short things like this uh it works pretty well so anyways uh yeah this is uh os something uh OS 10.4.11 and uh, yeah there's 733 megahertz G4 1.5 gigabytes um, and that's about it I don't have games on this I don't have anything on this uh, really like I said I don't mess with this machine much um, because I have a, a later G4 tower that's a lot more capable um, and I think I'll spend a little bit more time on that machine when I do a video on that one probably pretty soon Maybe the next video or the video after that I'll cover that machine and um, May I think I'll play a game on it. I'll show you guys believe it or not. There are Mac OS X uh, Or OS 10 um, I, I was told the correct way if it's OS X or OS 10 I was told once, but I don't remember. I think it's OS just call it OS 10 um yeah, there are OS 10 exclusive games for OS 10 and the PowerPC, and I have one of them, and uh, maybe I'll play that and uh, show that off. So, yeah, that's about it for this machine. Uh, recommendation, should you pick one up? Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to play with, like, earlier OS 10, and it, it's it's capable, you know, it, like I said, it's... It's probably equivalent of like a lower end Pentium 4, high end Pentium 3, that kind of era. So, you know, if you can get it like super cheap, they're the, aesthetically they're really nice. They're really easy to work on and get into. Uh, I might recommend a later model though, although even those ones kind of have their issues. Uh, so, but I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. So yeah, there's the uh, digital audio edition uh, G4. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about G4 stuff, uh, stay tuned for, you know, I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do another video on my uh, later G4 tower. And uh, I did some upgrades on that that people might find interesting. So stay tuned for that video. And thank you again.